Hey guys, welcome back. Drip Coach here with Drip and Farm for Poverty, where we don't trust, we verify and operate with integrity and transparency. Today, we're diving deep into the latest ETF filings and why they could prove Michael Saylor wrong. As you know, Saylor has been adamant that Bitcoin is the only crypto asset that will achieve institutional acceptance, but with eight ETF filings moving to the next round for SEC approval, is he about to be proven wrong? Stay tuned to find out. First off, let's recap what Michael Saylor said at the MicroStrategy World Conference about three weeks ago, where Saylor claimed that Bitcoin is the only crypto that will gain institutional acceptance this decade. He argued that no other crypto token, including Ethereum, would achieve the same level of legitimacy or support from Wall Street. Let's listen to that clip. You know what? There's no second best crypto. Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Now, why is it the best crypto asset? Because it's increasingly clear that no other crypto token is going to achieve institutional acceptance this decade. Bitcoin is the only crypto that's going to cross the chasm. You could see the writing on the wall when the spot ETF of Bitcoin was approved in January. By the end of May, you'll know that Ethereum is not going to be approved. Now that is a stark statement. <laughs> By the end of May, you'll know that Ethereum is not gonna be approved. Now, let's preface that with technically Ethereum is not approved and there's still potentials for the SEC to delay and um, postpone and even deny. But we, we do believe in my opinion that the writing is actually on the wall that this will get approved eventually. So I personally believe that uh, the landscape is changing but I always like to leverage, like I said, the intellect and um, experience of other people in the space to make an informed decision. So I forgot what regulation is coming down the pipeline in the US to where they're working on uh, basically assigning the authority to regulate crypto tokens. So if it's quote unquote sufficiently decentralized, then it'll fall under the Commodities and Exchange Commission. Uh, what is that? Let me see. Sorry, correction. Commodities and Futures Trading um, versus the SEC. So if it's not decentralized or not sufficiently decentralized, that'll be the SEC. And if it is, then it will be the CFTC. So if that be the case, then that would allow for other crypto assets to potentially see spot ETFs. Now let's listen to the rest of this clip again, because he actually talks about some of these other assets. And when Ethereum is not going to be approved, sometime this summer, it'll be very clear to everyone that Ethereum is deemed a crypto asset security, not a commodity. After that, you're gonna see that Ethereum, BNB, Solana, Ripple, Cardano, everything down the stack is just a crypto asset security unregistered. None of them. So that is a bold statement. And again, this was from Michael Saylor at his MicroStrategy World Conference three weeks ago, but he's literally saying Cardano, uh, XRP, all these other ones down the stack would be the deemed securities, which is interesting because we pretty much got the precedence on X XRP as not being a security. So I think he just, he's just so much of a Bitcoin bull <laughs> that he can't see any of these other things actually having uh, value for lack of a better word. But again, we are getting some regulatory clarity. So this was on May 23rd. Lawmakers are set to vote for the Fit 21 bill on Wednesday afternoon. So in this uh, article from Coindesk, you say U.S. House set to vote for first standalone crypto market structure bill dubbed Fit 21 or the Financial Innovations and Technology for the 21st Century Act. And it basically is going to grant the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission greater spot market authority over digital assets deemed to be commodities, while also creating new jurisdictional lines for Securities Exchange Commission. So this is in conjunction with um, more clarity on what a decentralized blockchain will look like. So kind of like the Howey test, which is outdated, they have created a new five step test on whether something is decentralized or not and includes a roadmap for the regula regulator to utilize. So that is awesome. That is good to actually see. So that flies in stark contradiction to what Saylor was saying. So specifically, the CFTC 
bill classifies a blockchain as decentralized if, among other requirements, no person has unilateral authority co to control the blockchain or its usage, and no issuer or affiliated person has control over 20% or more of the digital asset. So you could use, that's not the full five-step test, I guess, but once that's made public or this actually passes, I should say, you will be able to come through here and determine how many of these meet that um, specific litmus test. I believe BNB would fail that test, but as I mentioned in my previous video, it doesn't matter because BNB is primarily focused on everything outside the US anyway. And it's become the number three, because you can't count USDT, uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency, number one blockchain, yeah, two, number two blockchain um, outside of Bitcoin. Actually, no, take that back. Yeah, Ethereum is a blockchain. So BNB would be number three. And then number one exchange is what I meant to say. So it's done all that with the regulatory scrutiny and the gaslighting from the SEC and the lawsuits, all that stuff. So I'm still bullish on this, even though it will not pass the litmus test. And as Michael Saylor said, it is definitely deemed a security because <laughs> I think there's only like eight validators or something ridiculous like that. Um, let me see something real quick. I never looked at this before, the BNB contract address and the holders on there. So it mentioned more than 20% of supply. This one account owns 13%. Well, actually Binance <laughs> by itself would own the bulk. I don't know who these two individuals are. Maybe one is CZ, I would imagine. Um, but anyway, yeah, this would definitely be not, not sufficiently decentralized in the least. But let's go back to Sailor and finish up the clip. Will ever be wrapped by a spot ETF. None of them will be accepted by Wall Street. None of them will be accepted by mainstream institutional investors as crypto assets. This is the one universal consensus accepted institutional grade crypto asset in the world. There won't be another one this decade. I can't speak that 20, 30, 40, 50 years out, anything can happen that far out. But between the year 2024 and the year 2030, the, the die is cast, the writing is on the wall. This is the winner. So that will be interesting to see how this plays out. So as of right now, he's still technically right. ETH has not been approved, but um, as he just stated, the writing is on the wall, potentially for approving this ETH ETF, as well as um, the house passing this financials innovation technology. Um, so I forgot who I was listening to, but it was somebody that said, essentially um, the narrative changed abruptly, like in a matter of hours slash days. So Michael Saylor making this statement three weeks ago was 100% on point, but something earlier this week changed um, regarding the pressure to get these things moving forward. And my assumption would have been like, again, that comes from me, but somebody else will listen to is that this would have to be because of BlackRock. So and all these other ETFs, Fidelity, um, all this other stuff, that amount of money out there is now seeing what the crypto landscape can do and is doing and they want a piece of the pie so they've got the first king of crypto asset approved now they want to march down the chain and get eth approved now to get eth approved they need support of regulatory clarity so that's where in my humble opinion this cftc and this fit 21 bill that was put out way last year um, but the fact that it's getting pushed forward and getting um, support points to someone with more power and control puppeteering the strings to get this done. Now, once that gets done, then they will have the litmus test for all these other tokens and assets and coins, I should say. So that will be interesting because once that gets clarified, on what the litmus test is, then everyone can now operate with much more clarity and certainty. And again, it's still not that big of a deal, but we do know that BlackRock in the US, because it's the uh, world reserve currency, it, it kind of ebbs and flows the rest of the financial markets across the globe. So um, with that coming into play, then it will allow the other countries and financial traders and all that stuff in these other places, sovereign wealth funds, you name it, to start making more moves with more certainty. So I personally believe this is getting done in this decade, <laughs> contrary to what Michael Saylor said. And I believe we will see clarity on some of these other ones as we get closer and closer towards the election. 
Um, again, I don't believe B&B will pass that litmus test, but I'm not worried about that because I believe there's a, a different headwind to continue propelling this forward. And I think, again, I mentioned this before, that will come when CZ is finishing up his sentence sometime around August, if I'm not mistaken. So keep your eyes peeled for that because I think this is going to be a sleeper of a decent pump. Everybody's looking at Solana and even AVAX. Cardano's still out there, but I think they have just blown this one off because, yeah, it already had a decent run. I mean, hell, it launched at like, uh, what was it? Yeah, pennies on a dollar, dollar, some change, 10, 20, like $10. It was pretty much bouncing around in there. Uh, below that, actually, so 2017. But either way, once you get into 2018, it's like in the $10 to $20 range, drop back down to 10. So it's already had a 600X, I'm sorry, 60X, 60X from $10 to the previous all-time high of 600 and some change. So I think everybody's kind of just like, eh, we've seen that, but I believe it could definitely reach another five, to 10x potentially in this bull run based off of old ETH prices. So I think it could easily get to the old all-time high of ETH, which was just under 5K. So that's still like a 7x from here, 7, 8x. So it's not, you know, potentially what any of these other lower cap points could do. But um, for me, the thesis is all about trying to just minimize the gambling and trying to get a bag and a little bit of everything and then kind of just focus on what I've done the most research on in the ecosystem. And for me, that's Bitcoin and BNB. ETH is still solid, but just the gas fees are killer. So until they fix that, this is it. All right. I hope you found that valuable. If you did, smash that HBO special. Help brother out. Like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, lift daily and achieve your impossible. See ya. Want to pay your in real life bills with crypto? How about send crypto directly to anyone with a bank account? Spritz Finance is a decentralized solution to be your own bank and connect your crypto earnings to real-world bills and payments. They do not take custody of your assets and allow support on multiple blockchains and Web3 wallets. Sign up below using my referral link and you will get $50 back when you make your first $50 bill payment with crypto. Additionally, I will be using referral bonuses to airdrop, donate, or burn based on community feedback. Sign up now.